What's up guys, Penguin Overlord here, and welcome back to the Ghost Recon Breakpoint Private Beta. It is a gloomy, rainy day here in Aurora, so let's talk about Gunsmith. So, there's a couple of things that are going on with Gunsmith, uh, quite a few changes. My weapon just appeared, hooray. Uh, that are going on with the uh, Gunsmith. So, let's pull out... So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show off Gunsmith and all the various different options for customization. So, obviously some controversial elements we have to talk about first. Uh, these are your customization op categories. So you've got magazine, muzzle, rail, scope, and underbarrel. You will not be able to customize barrel or stock in um, or trigger in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. So that's truthfully a little disappointing it is what it is it's a it is a gunsmith downgrade let's be honest about that at least in terms of what we could customize but there are going to be weapon variants so if you do want a short barreled weapon you can it's just um you, you may have to accept like not having the type of stock you want or whatever so maybe that's something that could that ubisoft would change in the future but for now that's the way it is so it is what it is. So let's talk about, let's go through all the different options through all the different weapons um, that we can have. So obviously magazines is kind of self-explanatory. You got your standard and your extended and your small magazine. So here's the thing about parts and attachments in this game. They have clearly defined stat bonuses that are specific so unlike wildlands where you basically had to guess what different things did because they like for instance like the compensators would give you an arbitrary accuracy boost but you wouldn't really know um that you would get also get a vertical recoil reduction until you had actually tested the weapon for yourself this is not the case at breakpoint which i think is a good thing now it will show you specific things um that um that your attachment will change to the dynamics of your weapon. So the extended magazine, for instance, obviously gives you more bullets, significantly more bullets. So 30 to 50. And by the way, your standard magazine you start with is a 30 round magazine. That's a positive change. Unlike in Wildlands where your standard was 20 and you had an extended 30, 20 rounds wasn't really enough firepower for an assault rifle, at least in my opinion. So that's a solid change. Thank you, Ubisoft. Um, obviously, if you want a smaller magazine, you can unlock it later, and that will give you 10% reload speed, so a slightly faster reload. A larger magazine will give you 50 bullets, um, a slower re reload speed by 10%, and more vertical recoil. So that's the trade-off you have to consider. Do you want more ammo, but, and are you comfortable with dealing with more recoil and a slower reload? So there's that. Oh, one more thing before I really go into detail. Um, paints. Uh, so obviously you've got your color preset. There's a lot of stuff locked in the beginning. I have leveled up my uh, assault character, my panther, no, assault class, panther class, and the sniper class. And I'm still working on field medic at the time I was recording this video. So, um... If you reach tier level 3 in these um, classes, you'll unlock different variations of multicam. Assault will give you regular multicam. Panther will give you multicam black. Uh, Field Medic will give you uh, multicam tropic. And uh, the Sharpshooter will give you multicam alpine. And I presume all these other camos will be unlocked through various different methods, buying it through the store. In this case, destroying a Titan Dome, uh, Titan drone on Golem Island. So we'll find out what that is when the game comes out. And the cool thing is now there's individual paint presets. So if you want a black gun with um, tan attachments, you can do that now. So you can seriously customize everything. You can even customize. Okay, that's the rail attach. It's not the actual rail itself. Uh, you can customize the scope a different colors. So let's put that. Let's just color this weird. Let's make this like a Franken gun. No, let's put that coyote brown. 
on the barrel is going to be this color and that's stock I already colored the muzzle color the mag this so you can have a very weird franken gun looking monstrosity well, let me customize that rail piece with something else yeah so you can have a weird looking gun in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and that's a cool thing. A lot of people were asking for um, all of the uh, paint customizations to be locked, unlocked to all the attachments instead of a few. So people got what they want with that. So that's a good change to the gunsmith. Now, a lot of this, even though we're getting less customization options, there's really cool um, items that we can have. So, with the muzzle devices for an assault rifle, you've got um, a couple different options. So, obviously, your standard muzzle and your suppressor. That's what you start the game with. A suppressor will reduce damage by 20% on all guns. However, if you're a Panther class, that bonus goes away when you're wielding submachine guns and pistols. Not assault rifles or any other weapon. Just pistols and submachine guns so if running panther class you definitely want to consider having a suppressed smg with you uh because because of that bonus is going away so the compensator so this gives you let seven percent less vertical recoil and ten percent less shot spread so already we're getting significant more details as to what these attachments do which is which is really cool i'm excited for this uh, so it's not just an arbitrary accuracy bonus. Um, you can just get you get specific ideas as to what your attachment will do, and it will balance your weapon in different ways. The flash hider, so that gives you minus twenty percent shot spread. So you're going to get less, um, just your less bullets spreading all over the place. So that will be pretty neat. The muzzle break. It reduces inward kick, most noticeable hip fire. So if you decide to do hip fire and not actually aim, you'll get 20% less recoil with that and minus 5% shot spread. So up to you, whichever one you want. I will obviously do weapon setup and employment videos when Ghost Recon Breakpoint comes out. And it's going to be interesting discussions, an interesting time playing with different attachments and seeing what works best for your intended purpose with the gun. So that's pretty cool. So, rail attachments for an assault rifle, we're going to have the PEC-15, which gives you minus 30% hip fire recoil, so if you like to aim, this is basically useless unless you want to cosplay as a special forces operative and having a top-mounted PEC-15. I personally don't really notice a huge difference unless I'm, like, not aiming with my optics, so kind of a wash for me personally, but hey, if you like it, you like it. The Atpil 3, so this is basically the uh, Laser 3 dot from Wildlands. Um, so this does a couple of things. 10% less horizontal recoil, 7% less time to aim, and minus 10% shot spread. So that's a solid um, attachment if you're not going to run like a grenade launcher, I think. It's basically going to make your assault rifle much better with, in all sorts of different aspects. The range finder, um, so basically this will increase your range, so I assume that means that bullet drop will be, uh, you'll have less bullet drop, um, but also it'll slow down your gun by 15%, so it'll give you more time to aim. So, I personally never really use range finders on assault rifles, didn't really see the point. I don't think I'll be using that much in breakpoint, I'll try it out, but I don't think this will be a good thing. And... For the final attachment, which I'm super excited about because this is a new product to enter, like, the gun market, the Maul DA. So this is an advanced IR laser, increases range stability. 15% range, so again, not super useful, but hey, that's cool. Minus 10% sway, so this is basically when you aim your gun, it sways a little bit. So the mall should stabilize that out. At least that's how I think that works. So let me go back to... I'm still getting used to the menu, guys. It'll take me a bit. 
Uh, so when we go back to the mall, it'll reduce that a little bit and minus 20% shot spread. So it'll make your gun perform better at distance and it'll just have, it'll give you less shot spread. So you'll have better control of your recoil and minus 10% sway is going to be useful for the grenade launcher. So we'll skip ahead to that. So the grenade launcher obviously gives you grenades. That's going to be a super necessary thing in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Was a little bit inconsistent in the private beta, but I'm sure that'll get squared away. Or if it's a nerf, it'll it'll be what it is. But it's going to be super, super useful, especially with all the drones in the game. But it does give you 15% sway. So if we go back to the mall, so it'll knock off 10% of that sway. So you only you only effectively lose a 5%. You'll lose five percent. Uh, you'll get five percent extra sway to it, which is not that much. So that balances out and just makes your gun better. So uh, obviously, we'll have to play test all this stuff. I was not able to unlock the mall DA in the private beta at the time of this recording. Maybe I'll find it. Probably not though. But we'll definitely be playing around with all these different attachments. Um, well, since I talked about the grenade launcher, let's go with the other underbarrel rail option. So, there's a couple of different grips and stuff, and at the current time of this private beta, not all of them appear on all different weapons. So, you're going to see different ones on different guns and different categories of guns. It's a little bit confusing, which just kind of everything was available for everything. So, the S. TFG angled grip. I don't know what that's supposed to stand for. Sorry, guys. Maybe somebody in the comments could tell me. Uh, time to aim and mobility at the cost of horizontal recoil. So, faster handling gun. Um, but your bullets will spread out a little bit more. Probably not going to use this one. Probably mostly because of the grenade launcher. But I really don't like introducing horizontal recoil into weapons. That's not a good thing. You want your... You want that to basically be as minimal as possible. You can compensate for vertical recoil, but it's harder to compensate for horizontal recoil because it's more random. Okay, lightweight vertical grip. Mobility and vertical recoil are the compens compensation at the cost of stability. So, minus 10% vertical recoil, minus 15% reload speed, so faster handling gun, more shot spread, and more horizontal recoil. Hold on. I think I goofed that up. Okay, so the horizontal recoil with this will be less. So you'll be able to compensate it for it better. So, okay. Or maybe... What the hell is going on here? I'm sorry, guys. I am confused. Let me figure this out. So, it's minus 10% horizontal recoil. So it's supposed to be less... Okay, I think something's goofed here with Ubisoft. Surprise, surprise. We'll figure that out when the game comes out. So yeah, this, that's what this will do. And then the uh, tactical vertical foregrip. Small vertical and horizontal recoil compensation at the cost of reload speed and stability. So um, it'll give you more weapon sway, 15%. But less vertical and horizontal recoil. And... Um, it will slow down your reload speed. So up to you whether you want to use that or not. I My take is just use the grenade launcher because you're going to need that like a lot. Scopes. Oh boy, this is bad. This is not good, guys. So there's a bunch of different scopes in the game, but a lot of them you can't use on assault rifles. So the, EXPS, the, the EXP3 and G33 sight, this is your only um, variable magnification optic. The digital sight is back. The digital scope from Ghost Recon Wildlands is back, but it's a fixed two power. Yes, you heard that correctly. And yeah, it makes no freaking sense. So yeah, you pull it out. It's that. It's... Yeah. It, it basically does nothing well. I mean, it just kind of... I mean, it basically works for CQB. Not super great for distance, though. So, 
it this makes no sense because in real life this optic is a one to four power optic so it should have that variable magnification and one to four not 2.5 fixed so i i'm going to rail on ubisoft for that i already did in the ott that spoiler nda violation whatever um the point is though that 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 needs to go that needs to be fixed Sorry, I'm just kind of passionate about this because obviously this stuff is um, important to me. Just weapons accuracy. The Comp M4 is basically your starter red dot, at least for assault rifles. You can change the reticle for some damn reason, just like in Wildlands. I don't know why, because in real life, the Comp M4 is a red dot sight. And it doesn't have a reticle that you can change like that. So again, realism fail from Ubisoft. Just gotta call it like it is. Uh, I keep picking the wrong thing. So yeah, as your star sight, you've got your crappy Chinese red dot sight again. The, and the EXPS3 regular sight, which I isn't unlocked. I don't think you could get it in the private beta. So that's assault rifle attachments. Let's... Well, actually, since we have sniper rifles... Uh, a sniper rifle here, let's talk about that. So now... There's a couple things you need to understand here. There are sniper rifles and DMRs in this game. So, so basically, your um, DMR won't pull from your sniper rifle ammo pool. And actually, the ammo pool looks works differently. There's actual calibers now. I don't know where I can find it to put it up to pull it up. There is an area here somewhere. Not loadout. I'm sorry guys, I'm, I'll probably edit this and skip past it. Um, no. I know there's a place where you can see it, but um, I can't pull it up right now for some reason. Alright, so... I forgot to talk about marks, we'll talk about that when I look at the sniper rifles. But yeah, there's DMRs that have a 308 pool, and then the sniper rifles... Uh, which have 338 ammo, even though this rifle is technically a 50 cal. No, it doesn't make sense. Just roll with it. It's a video game. Okay, so this gives doesn't really give you much. You've got different scope options. You've got the well, the dual range sight is um, one of them. That's that's basically your default sight for DMRs, and I think it's one of the sights you have unlocked for sniper rifles. But this is your default um, scope for sniper rifles, the, T, the T5XI sight. And it's different from the one in Wildlands, which I'm sure you've seen throughout various trailers and stuff. But instead of the one in Wildlands, this we have this. It's much more, the dot is much more crisp and clear in this and um instead of that giant big plus sign so it's a little more accurate to how the gun work this excuse me the scope is in real life holy crap this video is 18 minutes long sorry guys this is just going to be a long video because we're showing off everything um you've got the digital sight even though that's going to be useless on a sniper rifle you've got the russian long range sight which i don't have unlocked and TARS 101. Actually, let's look at the TARS 101. Let's see how that changed. Ooh. So it's a fixed 5x5. Five five, and it's much cleaner this time. That's interesting. It's actually a lot like the uh, T5XI. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Alright, I'll mess around with that more. Although I think I may like the T5XI better. Oh, this has more hash marks, so it may be easier to calculate bullet drop from. Hold on. Actually, let's look at the dual range sight real quick. Which you can actually put on the M82 now. Uh, you could not put it on the, uh, the BFG-50A for some damn reason in Ghost Recon, uh... Wildlands because Gubisoft. Uh, so that's it, this is basically the exact same reticle as from Ghost Recon Wildlands, and of course, you could switch to the red dot. And you, for some reason, you can see the suppressor as well. Let me 
pull, pop that out. Yeah, the suppressor is gone now, so it's not blocking your vision. And now the suppressor back on, and it's not blocking my vision. Okay, so some weirds going on here. Whatever. Again, private beta. Long video, guys. Oh, marks. So. Ubisoft talked about this a bit, but I just wanted to make this clear. So, um, the mark upgrade. So when you upgrade a particular weapon's mark, it will apply to all of the guns that you're applying that mark to. So if you have a lower level M4A1, uh, there's no point. You don't necessarily have to worry about, oh, well, should I wait to upgrade its mark until end game? Uh, it, will that be? Will it just be a waste of time because I'm going to be switching out a weapon? No, that won't be a waste of time because it'll apply to all of the particular guns, um, and each mark will give you a passive bonus. So the Mark One bonus, at least for this gun, no, I think it's for all the guns. So um, the M82 Mark One upgrade, which is what its default upgrade, will give you nine percent damage to drones. That's one of the reasons why this gun is super effective against the Behemoth drone. There's other reasons we'll go into that um, after Ghost Week on Breakpoint comes out and I've played the game a bunch more. So the passive bonus, Mark Upgrade, Mark 2, after a kill you get plus 10 reload speed. So I'm not sure how that works, whether that's a temporary buff or what's going on, but um, yeah, that's what you get. Oh, for the M4A1, since we're here, let's do that. So Mark Upgrade, Mark 1, after a kill is 10 reload speed. And mark upgrade at mark two is plus one mobility. I'm not sure how useful that is. I don't think it's very useful. Pistols. We've got a bunch of different pistols in the game. Uh, P320, etc., etc. So, at least in the beta, again, you've got handgun suppressor. Oh, there's a couple cool options with handguns. So, they have a flash hider now and a compensator. And a muzzle break, which is pretty interesting because compensated handguns have become more popular within uh, military, law enforcement, and uh, private civilian circles, uh, gun owners that like train a lot. So they become more popular, and it's pretty cool to see Breakpoint uh, coming out with those options for handguns. And I know a few people were asking with them. I don't know how useful these are all going to be um, because in Wildlands. Um, Basically, the suppressed pistol is the way to go since it was a one-shot kill. That's not the case in Breakpoint anymore. It'll take at least a couple of shots to take down an enemy with a handgun. Unless you get a headshot. So I'm not sure how valuable the uh, suppressor will be. We'll mess around with this when Breakpoint comes out. Uh, mark upgrade. After swapping weapons, you get plus three damage. So, okay. I mean, they they all have like different... I think abilities. Oh no, this is all the same, I think. Sorry, I'm figuring out things on as we go. Oh no, there's, there's different bonuses for different types of guns. So the 5.7 has plus 2% movement speed. Small bonuses, really. Okay. Okay, so there's different bonuses here. Okay, so the rail, uh, you have the at peel, which uh, less shot spread and hip fire recoil, and then no, and the at peel times three, uh, horizontal recoil, time to aim, shot spread. So probably the best handgun attachment, unless you're just not going to aim and spray and pray like uh, you're a gangster and you're holding your gun sideways. On the streets of Chicago or whatever. I don't know. Okay. Submachine guns. Let's see what our submachine guns options are. Because. Actually let me shoot. Okay. <laughs> so. Magazines. So. Submachine guns have a standard magazine. In this case it's 30. Small magazine. Uh, I don't know what that is. Because I haven't locked it yet. And the extended mag. So the Vector has a drum mag now. <laughs> it has a freaking drum mag. Actually, let's shoot this, because I haven't shot the Vector yet. This is actually a recently marked one I got, so...
Dude, that's gonna be stupid. I have to play with this. I have to play with this as a panther class, because this is just... This is like having a miniature A-10 warthog that you can carry with you, just... Dude, whatever gets hit by that is dead. Drones, people... Oh, man, it's gonna be ridiculous. Um... Okay. So, obviously, you've got your mark. I've already upgraded the mark, too. Uh, after a kill, 10% reload. 10 re point, reload speed. And... Oh, so this increases reload speed. That's all it does. At least in the private beta. That's kind of neat. Um... Yeah. Actually, I'm not sure if this is unlocked yet. I'm confused as to that. As to that, but... Um, yeah. So, okay. So, Suppressor, again, same thing. 20% damage. Play as Panther if you want to do that. There's a Compensator, just like in Wildlands, for some submachine guns. Maybe it'll be for all of them in this one. Flash Hider, add Muzzle Brake. Again, it's kind of similar options as the Assault Rifle. Um... Same options here, PEC-15, APO, Mall DA. The Mall DA will not always appear on different weapons because uh, some weapons don't have a top rail. So um, that won't always be an option for your different uh, guns. Just keep that in mind. Because, just because of the way the Mall mounts. So, the sights. And this is where I have to criticize Ubisoft. I'm sorry, guys, but why did you do this? The Micro T1 is one of the most popular uh, rifle optics to put on um, assault rifles or semi-auto magazine-fed rifles uh, that look like assault rifles. Why would you only have that available on some guns but not assault rifles in the game? It doesn't make any sense. The Micro T1 should be an option. And there should be a magnifier option with it as well, just like in Ghost Recon Wildlands. It's, again, there's a reason why people are saying this gunsmith in Breakpoint is a um, downgrade of the gunsmith in Wildlands and Future Soldier, because it is. Uh, folding iron sights, EXP is 3, panoramic, blah blah blah, comp and 4, digital sight. You can put that on, why? Uh, MH1 sight, let's go put that on, so we... I mean, you've seen it in trailers and stuff, but, um, this is what it looks like. It's basically like the panoramic sight, only it's different, but the reticle is sort of the same. Getting better at this. Okay. Again, different grips for different guns. There's reasons why they did this, but I don't really know. So I, I haven't messed with the submachine guns much, so I've decided which is going to be best. Uh, we obviously have the AFG-2, uh, minus 10% time to aim, minus 15% reload speed, minus 5% vertical recoil. Excuse me. So, that actually looks like all solid bonuses there, so this may be, again, glitched. Because it says better handling and time to aim at the cost of reload speed, but reload speed is minus 15%, so... No, you know, that's, that is less. My mistake. My mistake. Okay. Then you've got the lightweight vertical recoil grip. Uh, minus 10% vertical recoil. Minus 15% reload speed. Plus 10% shot spread. That's not good. Plus 50% horizontal recoil. That's not good. So probably not this for the, uh, for the submachine guns. Actually have this selected uh, that doesn't even show up on the gun I don't think that that's weird sorry this is gonna be a long and rambly video so uh, shift vertical foregrip smallest vertical recoil compensation in class but no trade-off so 7% vertical recoil so that may be the one you want to go with we'll test it all this stuff out and top mount pec 15 so, okay, I should have covered this. So some optics and some guns offer a top mount at uh, PEC-15. So let me go back to the assault rifle. Let me find my M4A1. Uh, 
Okay, so here's how you get top mounted PEC 15. If you have the EXP E3 G33 sight or the Comp M4. If you. Sorry, guys. It's been a long and trying day for me. Uh, so you have the Comp M4 on it, and your gun supports a top rail. Um, it will have a top mounted PEC 15. But you can't change that manually, it's just automatic for certain scopes. So, um, there's that. If you put on the digital sight, which, why would you in this game unless they give it variable magnification, it'll go back on the side, like it was in Ghost Recon Wildlands. So there you go. So that's how you get top mounted PEC-15. I'm sure if you have the EXPS-3, it'll also give you top mounted PEC-15. Let me go put my scope back on. This is a long video again, I apologize. Uh, did I cover everything with the vector? Yeah, I think I did. I have to play with the vector more, because that's ridiculous. Um, LMGs. Let's talk about LMGs. Oh, with assault rifles, there's no ACOG, which, again, disappointing, even though I don't really use the ACOG. UK standard magazine, because this is a British LMG. Uh, this one holds 50 bullets. A lot of the LMGs will hold different amounts of ammo. Uh, compensator, flash hider... And uh, muzzle brake, same thing as before. Okay, built-in iron sight. Now, again, this is not an option for assault rifles for some reason. It is for this LMG. Why Gubisoft? I don't know. Uh, uh, the Russian collimator sight. So I think this is just this without the uh, magnifier. EXPS3, are you red dot sight? Micro T1 sight. And... Um, that's it. I th I could have sworn you were able to put the uh, ACOG on LMGs now. Let me go to this one. Just to be sure. Okay, so on some light machine guns, you'll be able to put on the ACOG, finally. Because people have been asking for um, greater magnification on LMGs. Finally, they added it in breakpoint. So that's a good thing. Uh, pick 15 at peel. Same kind of deal here, no top rail, so, well, I mean, there's a top rail there, but that's, you wouldn't really be able to reach the controls of the mall up there. You'd have to do a weird thing with your hand, so that, that's, that's no good. Um, I'm trying to think what else is there. Okay, let's go to under barrel. So, bipods are in the game. Breaking finally. Uh, bipods. 10% horizontal recoil, 15% extra range, minus 15% sway, a little bit more time to aim, so trade offs. Uh, rounded angle foregrip. Um, in case you don't want to do the bipod thing, you still get less horizontal recoil, only more of it. Less time to aim, but you do get more vertical recoil, so it's going to climb more. And grip pod, this is usual the standard um, default option for light machine guns. 15% uh, speed while aiming, so your ADS time goes up. Less vertical recoil and more range, so good benefits all around. Actually, let me go equip this gun. Because I want to know if you can deploy a bipod or not. Um... It doesn't look like it. Hold on. I just switched to, oh, there we go. Back on iron sights mode. Um, okay. Pressing V is normally the grenade launcher button. It does not deploy a bipod. Okay. There we go. Uh, let's put on a grip pod. See what happens. Again, this is a long video and I do apologize. 
Okay. So grip pod is on. Uh, let's hit the prone. No, it's just cosmetic for right now. Um. But you can hold down with your mouse and uh, compensate for the recoil on that. Alright, DMRs. Actually, let's get a semi-auto DMR. So, Mark 14, haven't used that yet in the... Uh, in the private beta a 15 round standard magazine which is not how it works it's a 20 round standard mag whatever whatever small magazine if you want less bullets and more reload speed gotcha so again same options compensator flash hider muzzle brake i know i'm not sounding excited for it but trust me i am this is these are pretty cool options dual range sight that's your standard go-to sight uh, ACOG, T5XI, Taurus 101, Digital Sight, there's normally one more, it is not an option on the um, Mark 14, probably because you can't mount it, right, I'll find another DMR and show you what I'm talking about, so PEC 15, Add PL Range Finder, Mall DA, probably the Range Finder or the Mall DA, because they both do the same range capability so that'll be cool to mess with uh, let's let's see if it's on the SVD yes ACS ACSS site and this is a big freaking disappointment don't get this one for a couple reasons one this is I didn't equip it Where the hell did I put it? SVD. There we go. Disappointment for two reasons. One, this is essentially an assault rifle scope. It's a low power variable optic, which means it goes from one to four or five or six. There's some now that even go up to eight. This is a fixed three, three and a half power. You cannot change the magnification of it. So Ubisoft, if you are watching uh 37 minutes into this long gunsmith video please let let us put this on assault rifles and give us a variable zoom of one to four and also have like no scope shadow when it's at one power please like come on i was super looking forward to this when i saw it in the store and i was highly disappointed when i found out that you couldn't put it on assault rifles and it's a fixed three and a half power. Yikes. So there's that. Okay, I think I've covered. I covered LMGs, covered DMRs, shotguns. Um, shotguns. So we got several different shotguns. We've got the Sega 12 and the Russian 12. There's two different Russian shotguns in this game. Uh, for some reason so standard extended um, the extended only gives you 12 not 30 like in wildlands maybe it'll make a drum mag that gives you more we'll see uh, you can put a rail okay standard muzzle suppressor that comes stock from the beginning you can get a muzzle break a little bit useful we'll see you can put rails on it now, the ATPL and the PEC-15, at least on the Russian shotgun, not on the, uh, the M4, because it doesn't allow for that. Okay, um, this is funny. So you've got the Russian red dot sight, right? The XPS-3, Comp M4, Columnar sight, and the fucking ACOG. <laughs> I should probably um, add a face cam to my videos or streams so you can see my face right now. They added an ACOG to the shotguns. To the shotguns, but not the assault rifles. The shotguns where there's limited range. <laughs> oh my god. What time is it? Sorry, I'm rambling. It is... 228 in the morning 
where I am, so I need to wrap this shit up. And I'm swearing, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so AFG2, PTK angled foregrip, 10% time to aim, less of that, 10% horizontal recoil, minus 5% vertical recoil. Our, the Russian vertical recoil grip, which gives you more horizontal recoil, but less time to aim and less vertical recoil. Leaning towards this or this for, uh, no, I think this will be the better under barrel option than this, but we'll mess around with that when the game comes out. All right. So that is a very detailed look at, um, shotguns. Um, I don't have the Mark II upgraded yet, so, okay. That's a detailed look at Gunsmith. There are some great things about it. There are also some bad things about it. So, I hope, I really do hope they, um, make some adjustments to the Gunsmith in Ghost Recon Breakpoints. That way, everyone will be happier of it. So, if Ubisoft is watching and made it through this 40 minute long video, here's my two main requests, okay? One, digital scope. One to four power. Two, ACSS, ACSS scope. One to four power and available on assault rifles as well as DMRs. Please, I would love to run around with a low power variable optic on my assault rifle and have variable magnification. Please, I'm begging you guys. Please. Anyway, I have kept you guys long enough as it is. I will upload this video after I close that end this video. So I'm Penguin Overlord. I'm going to get some more sleep so we can wake up right and early and come back to you with more Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I will catch you all next time. Take care, guys.